This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Breaking news. Doberman Dan has released a new complimentary online report entitled 100 Days to Famous with Any Target Audience You Choose. You'll discover how to go from a complete unknown to quickly becoming a celebrity expert in any market or niche. Even better, you'll be booked solid with clients in practically no time at all. Go to FameForProfit.com now for all the details. That's FameForProfit.com. Prepare yourself for the uncensored. Nothing held back. No BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. It's good to be back with you, K9 crew. And JR, J- Jonathan Rivera, aka JR, aka Joe Nathan, aka Joe Nation. What other names do I call you? I think you nailed all of them right there. It's a beautiful, sunny day here in the Sunshine State, aka the Gunshine State. Everybody is packing heat down here, man. Like when you see the 90 year old little old man shuffling along with his cane. Don't go pissing him off because we're all packing heat down here and he just might shoot you at the, the gunshine state. I got to love that. Hey, uh, this might be a surprise to you seeing that you've seen me various times in various portly states, <laughs> <laughs> but I was a short and scrawny kid. Well, I'm still short, as you know, but uh, nobody has called me scrawny for decades now. I, I bulked up. And then in my later years, I bulked up more. But the kind of like bulk that you don't want, you know, like when you got the furniture disease, when your chest drops down into your drawers. By the way, you haven't seen me for a while. I am the leanest you've ever seen me that's for sure and i'm the least oh, wow, really? i've been in two decades wow yeah so but but you know yeah i'm still short but i was a scrawny kid man maybe 125 pounds 130 pounds in high school but i i so that's why i started bodybuilding i didn't want to be a scrawny kid and you know i got tired of being picked on and i also kind of thought like girls like a muscly guy so That's why I got into that stuff. But I wasted pretty much 10 years of my life trying to gain muscle. I was I was constantly frustrated because I had like very few results. When I first started working out in high school, I got results really quick, but then just kind of plateaued. And 10 years after that, man, I just like I worked my ass off with damn near no results. Not not for lack of trying either, you know. So I thought, I mean, I tried all kinds of stuff. I even all the routines that they publish in the magazines that they, that allegedly Arnold did, Arnold, oh, Sergio Oliva, or, you know, all those guys. Like I thought, oh, that's the secret, you know? So I do these marathon routines, man. I'd be in the gym for hours. And so, you know, I thought I was trying, but you see what I figured out, I was actually taking the easy way out. I did everything to avoid the number one thing that was necessary to gain muscle. By the way, once I figured that out, I, I made gains really fast. But after spinning my wheels for 10 years, trying to avoid this number one necessary ingredient, here's the formula I discovered for bodybuilding success. Increased weight on the bar and or increased reps and or more work AKA increased weight and or increased reps done within a shorter unit of time. So that is the training formula. Nutrition, supplements, miscellaneous. The, let me see. So drugs will fall under the miscellaneous category, steroids. Th- those are all other matters entirely, but they all become irrelevant if you don't get the training formula right. So So what was the number one thing I avoided for 10 years? Inquiring minds want to know. You look like you're about to ask that question, JR. You know it. What people don't know is we're recording this with video on Zoom. Will this video ever surface? Not unless somebody 
over my dead body. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that can be arranged. Uh, so, so the number one thing I've avoided for 10 years, in spite of the fact that it, it, it is the number one most important key to bodybuilding success, resistance. In other words, gradually and consistently making things more and more difficult. Interestingly enough, doing things to increase resistance in my entrepreneurial endeavors has been one of the biggest keys to my business success too. So I, I realized like this is totally contrary to what many of the make money online gurus have been telling you that making money is easy and there are magic money buttons online. <laughs> Didn't I love that? And, in know, my pants. <laughs> <laughs> magic money buttons in my pants. <laughs> Come get them. <laughs> I was going to say, we're talking about magic, all my money buttons. And, and you can hire somebody in the Philippines to do the button pressing for you for you know, a dollar an hour. But then when you changed it to in my pants, <laughs> I just hiring somebody to press that. <laughs> Doesn't my wife look beautiful? She just came home from the, from the peluqueria. That's the beauty shop. The beauty shop. And she got her... She got... Did you want to say hi? ¿Quieres, quieres saludar a la gente? And she got her hair flat ironed and she looks lovely. Oh, did she get the uh, Brazilian done? You're about to see, JR. Hi, how are you? Oh, looking good. <laughs> how are you, honey? She is looking good. Aww. Let's just, you know, I want to cut this podcast short because I want to go take advantage of my <laughs> marital status, if you know what I'm saying. So you look beautiful. Thank you. What were we talking? Oh, we were talking about perverted stuff. Magic and, money buttons. Oh, it's, it's totally, <laughs> this works out great for where my mind is going right now. Magic money buttons in the pants. Yeah, hiring somebody in the Philippines to press the button now that you got perverted and put it in your pants is prostitution. So it's strike. <laughs> I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, God, this thing has gone off the rails. Yeah, it has. Uh, <laughs> I just love hearing all these. The magic online ninja systems that make money for you effortlessly, all that stuff. Listen, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm right and they're wrong. Some might actually say that the internet marketing gurus are lying to you. Uh, I will leave that up to your innate intelligence to decide that. But that's, that's why I found all this pondering and pontificating in another P word I can't seem to think of at this particular time. Well, I got particular in there, so... I found it interesting what a young copywriter recently told me. It was in, in response to some advice I gave him, w which was not unsolicited advice. He asked for it. But then his reply was, and I quote, I'm feeling resistance about this idea. <laughs> you have feelings and you're a copywriter? Yeah. <laughs> Good point. So this guy, God bless him, he believed that that was a reason to avoid doing it. That, that the fact that he was feeling resistance was like some sort of reason or confirmation to avoid doing what I'd done told him to do. And, and based on my, hmm, counting years in my head, 35 years experience facing resistance. No, nah, it's got to be more than that. I was just thinking of like my entrepreneurial career. I was going to say based on my 35 years of experience facing resistance head on, and actually engineering things to try to increase it, the resistance that this guy was experiencing was the 100% without a doubt confirmation that what I was telling him was the right path. Because you see, with uh, this is just, this has been my life experience, okay? Now we're going back more than 35 years because I am more than 35 years old. What? Yeah, 36. But uh, <laughs> 36 plus, mm -hmm. 18. Uh, anywho, this has been my experience. W with the exception of learning cowboy chords on the guitar out of a book I bought when I was seven, nothing, even semi-worthwhile, has ever come easy for me. Yeah, okay. So granted, the cowboy chords were easy. Like I was, I bought the book, I came home, I was playing songs within minutes. That did come easy. And now the last 47 years of learning the guitar is not biddies. That's been nothing but resistance. So nothing, 
even semi-worthwhile has ever come easy for me. Nothing. No matter how I tried to avoid it or for how long, it always turned out that the resistance was the path I needed to walk to accomplish everything I wanted. And there was no other path. Any other actions, motions, gyrations, <laughs> any reasons, excuses, f- facts I, I used to justify me not marching ahead to head first into the resistance with a damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead attitude. No matter how good those excuses sounded, all my motion to avoid resistance resulted in all my time and effort wasted with like insignificant to zero results every single time in every single thing. Breaking news. Doberman Dan has released a new complimentary online report entitled 100 Days to Famous with Any Target Audience You Choose. You'll discover how to go from a complete unknown to quickly becoming a celebrity expert in any market or niche. Even better, you'll be booked solid with clients in practically no time at all. Go to FameForProfit.com now for all the details. That's FameForProfit.com. In fact, I not, not that long ago, I paid an internationally recognized expert to help me on a personal matter. It was, uh, it, it, it was, it was actually, it, so it was related to music. It, it wasn't the mechanics of playing the music. It was head stuff that has held me back in the music. It took me 18 months of waiting to finally get on this guy's calendar. And I, I got to tell you, it was more emotionally painful than I can possibly describe <laughs> with mere words. This expert confirmed what I had feared the most, that I'd been avoiding the one thing in, in spite of the fact of knowing better because of my business career, I'd been avoiding the one thing, the one and only thing necessary for me to truly get good in, in what I wanted to do, which was jazz improvisation. I'd been avoiding that one thing for 47 years. In other words, I'd been avoiding the resistance. Sure. You know, I'd, I'd only been granted like, okay, so in, in business, it was, it was always just full speed ahead, the hell with it. I'm going straight into this thing. I'm just head on with the resistance. So in this case, you know, yeah, granted, I had that, I had the business success and I'd really only been avoiding resistance in this particularly and, and admittedly a much smaller aspect of my life, you know, my music. The thing is, I know better. It's not just avoiding resistance in that particular aspect. It affects every aspect of my life, even the other areas where I have and continue to face resistance. It's damn, man. (laughs) Today's message is just, well, painful, isn't it? Like, whether you realize it or not, you just showed up in the ER with a gunshot wound that's going to be fatal if it's not treated. And, and I'm the grizzled inner city, seen it all ER doc treating you. So got bad news. Digging that nine millimeter slug out of your chest cavity is going to hurt and it's going to hurt bad. But if you're not ready to withstand the pain for a short period of time, here's your prognosis. You're going to die, dude. So yes, I admit I am, I'm not the messenger with particularly pleasant and unlift, uplifting news today. I will admit that. But for that, I will not apologize because today could be the beginning of the rest of your life, man. In in fact, a life better than you can possibly even imagine at this moment right now. And and I'm the dude pointing to the path that's going to lead you there because it's the only path. My, My only question is this, will you take it? Will you embrace the resistance and will you confront it head on? That is my question to you. I, I, okay, strike. I was going to drop the mic like, thud, we're done. Take it back. Got one, one more question, one more thing, and it's important. So have you ever heard the saying, familiarity breeds contempt, Jonathan? Yes. If, if you've been on 
if you've been on my list for a while or you've been a listener to this podcast for a while, I maybe you've got some amount of contempt for me circulating in your cranium. And, and how that usually manifests is by not paying much or any attention to me and what I'm trying to teach you. It's like, ah, it's just old Durham and Dan. I hear from all, him all the time. He's always saying the same stuff. So and granted, I, I will admit, if you're looking you know, for the perfect mess, messenger, well, you, <laughs> you're certainly not in the right place. You know, but if God can use an ass to deliver a message like he did in the Bible, then, well, he's using this ass right now today to deliver a message. But that's the problem with, with familiarity breeds contempt because you discount the message because of the messenger. Well, me, me, myself, and I, and all the successful entrepreneurs I personally know, we can tell you that if, if you make that mistake with this message, you're making a grave error that's probably going to ruin your life. Seriously, no hype, no exaggeration. Not taking this advice is going to make your life suck out loud. That's like when I want to, when something really sucks, I always say it sucks out loud. Even worse, it'll make you less of a man or woman. Like me, me talking about, he, so, oh yeah, hey, I'm only avoiding resistance when it comes to jazz improvisation. Like, listen, it affects everything, man. It, it will, you may think you're fooling yourself, but it'll make you less of a man or, or woman. And, and no matter how you ignore it or deny it, deep inside, you'll know it. But even worse, like much worse, your spouse and your children will know it too. Yeah, sure. They're, they're, they're probably not going to say, gee, dad, gee, mom, I think a lot less of you because you've demonstrated time and time again by avoiding resistance that you're not the man or woman you should, you could and should be. Nah, they, they won't say that. But trust me, you, you can see it in their eyes. Ouch, huh? Oh, they'll be thinking you suck out loud. I suck out loud. And, and in fact, speaking of resistance... If you weren't experiencing it before, I'd be willing to bet maybe you're even experiencing resistance to this message right now. And and I think that's great because that's just more confirmation that I'm right, as I always am. (laughs) So, so, uh, listen, have you ever read Stephen Pressfield's stuff? I only just heard about him a couple weeks ago. Okay, (laughs) on the call with Richard Armstrong, right? Yes. (laughs) And and I'm not talking about his fiction stuff, which is excellent. But so he wrote, well, a lot of successful books and that were turned into movies. Like probably one he's most known for is The Legend of Bagger Vance, a movie about golf. And Will Smith is, is the main character, Bagger Vance. But interestingly enough, based on the Bhagavad Gita, the, the Hindu Bible. So interesting where inspiration can come from. But, but I'm talking about Stephen Pressfield's like advice to writers, like his book, War of Art. I think any artist should, should get that book because what you're going to find is, it, and my message to you today is embrace the resistance. Be, and here's why. Because it's the universe telling, the, telling you that you can do it. Because think about it. If you couldn't do it, whatever it is you want to do that you're now experiencing resistance about in any form, if you couldn't do it, there's no reason to try and stop you. You know, just let you go and do whatever the hell you're going to do because you can't do it and you're going to fail. There's no reason for resistance to attack you. So get excited when you're feeling resistance, as my young copywriter friend said. And instead of Using that as an excuse like he did to tuck tail and run, use that as confirmation that whatever it is you want to do, by God, without a doubt, you can do it. What do you want the listeners to do? (laughs) I want them to (laughs) embrace the resistance. (laughs) Thank you. Nice (laughs) setup, by the way. (laughs) Face the resistance head on because it's, man, it's just confirmation you're on the right track. Listen, I'd, I'd love to help you face your resistance. If you qualify, I will help you. You can get all the details about that at fameforprofit.com. 
I, I'm basically, I'll help you get your brilliance out to the world in a way that that'll bring in a constant flow of what I call whale clients. Those are the, the best clients to deal with. They ain't a pain in the ass like the penny pitchers and they're the highest paying clients. And that's what fame for profit is all about. I've, so I've made myself famous in my granted narrow little niche, my narrow little world, but dagnabbit, I'm famous and I'm doing the same thing for others. So you can find out about that for fameforprofit.com. If you're feeling resistance about that, when you check out that site, hey, my brother, uh, sister, that's just more confirmation that that's probably what you need to do. Love it. Love it. All right. That is a wrap for another Off The Chain Show. Canine Crew will be back in your earbuds next time. Thank you for tuning in. Listen up, Canine Crew. The people who read this book will end up with your money because it reveals a breakthrough new strategy that gets a rush of new customers, builds your business faster, and brings in the highest possible profits. Even better, it does it with no giving away free stuff, no endless email sequences, no content marketing, no social media, and without all the other grunt work that rarely, if ever, results in getting new customers and making money. I'm talking about Doberman Dan's international best-selling book. Go to JustSellTheDamnThingBook.com now to get your own copy for just a penny. That's JustSellTheDamnThingBook.com. It's only a penny. So go to JustSellTheDamnThingBook.com now. This is the PodcastFactory.com.